everyone. This is Mexico Dayback TV, and this is my first vlog. So I need your support to stay with me from the very beginning until the end. Sa araw na ito, pag-usapan natin yung napakalagang topic na pasok na pasok sa panahon ngayon na makakarelate tayong lahat. Hindi lang ako or kayo, tayong lahat makakarelate. Especially during this new normal. Especially in teaching. Okay? Um, yung pag-usapan natin ay tinatawag natin CPA approach. Okay? CPA approach, ano ba ito? Uh, this is highly effective approach pala in teaching that develops a deep and sustainable understanding of math. Um, it was developed by American psychologist Jerome Bruno. This is based on his theory of representation. This method is commonly incorporated in the Singapore primary math curriculum. So, ito yung ginamit nila after um, conducting lots of researches. So, dito na sila naging hiyang. So, ito na lang kanilang ginamit until now. Students who are struggling to understand data in abstract form may gain or benefit by going back to concrete and pictorial approaches. So, this is composed of three stages. So, kailangan talaga natin pagdaanan ang tatlong stages. Bawal mag-shortcut. Bawal tayo mag-jump. So, bawal magmamadali. Kailangan step by step ito. Okay, ituturo ko sa inyo. Ano ba yung CPA approach? Uh, I'm sure na ginagamit na ito ng mga teachers. Pero hindi, hindi pa lang siguro lahat na ka, ano, hindi talaga nila na, naintindihan, sig- hindi pa naintindihan iba. Or hindi pa nga nila na, na incorporate na ito pala, ito pala yung CPA approach. Ah, CPA approach pala yung tawag dito. Okay? So, Let's start with the C. Okay? The C stands for concrete. So, sa stage, na, sa stage dito, sa stage na ito, during sa concrete stage, um, pinapakita natin sa bata, pinaf, pinafeel natin sa bata, or we let children manipulate, interact, or play with the manipulatives. So, na, dito nila nakikita, dito nila na, na, naririnig, dito nila nalalasahan, dito nila na, na-feel yung mga bagay o yung mga objects na kanilang pinag-aaralan. Nag-represent tayo. Okay? So, na, for example, uh, your lesson is addition. Okay? So, instead of going directly, so, na, directly going to the two, like for example, two plus three equals five. Yan, napakita mo agad ito. Or, eight plus five, eight plus two equals ten. Yan, napakita mo agad. Nag-answer agad sila. Hindi po, hindi, hindi pa nila naintindihan ang concept. Okay? So, ang dapat gawin natin is, show them. Show them. Like for example, you say two plus six, or two plus five, three plus five. Ganun. For example, nagpakita ka ng tatlong green balls. So, three. Tapos, idagdag mo sa limang blue balls. So, the question is, ilan lahat? Okay? So, you put them together. So, the three balls at saka yung five blue balls, ilan lahat ang bola? Okay? So, pinakita mo sa kanila. So, ah, malalaman nila. Malalaman ng bata na, ah, yung three pala, dagdagan ng five, magiging eight pala. Because they will count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, malalaman nila. So, give more examples give examples na makikita natin sa paligid. Okay? So, mas ma- mas mabuti kasi pag, kung, kung baga contextualize yung pagtuturo mo. So, what is available, yun yung gagamitin mo. Huwag ka nang gumamit ng hindi sila, hindi nila maintindihan, hindi nila nahawakan, hindi pa nila nakita. Okay? So, yun. Pagkatapos, for example, in subtraction, I have here, Six masks. Okay. Six mask. Pagkatapos, nalaglag yung isa. Ilan na lang yung mask. So, nakita nila na may nalaglag na isa. Six mask ang pinakita mo. Tapos, nalaglag yung isa. So, ang ang question ngayon is, ilan yung natira? So, nakita talaga ng bata. Okay. 
pagkatapos or in multiplication. Show them. For example, you have three sets. First set, second set, and the third set. So you have three sets of three pots. So three sets of three pots, you will have nine. Diba? So hindi ka nag-memorize agad ng multiplication table. There's no need to do that. Bakit tayo nag-memorize? Hindi pa nang inaintindihan ng bata ang concept. So show them the concept or let them understand the concept first. Kasi yung mem- pag-memorize ng multiplication table, pwede na yung mangyari pag alam na niya yung concept. Okay lang yun. That's for master, master na sila. But that's for shortcut. Kasi yung na- naranasan natin dati or yung na-experience ng iba, pinamemorize agad ng multiplication table. Hindi pa nga natin alam yung concept. Di ba? So you have to show them first. Show them the sets. Six times five. So six sets of five. Then you get to have the product of 30. So ganun. Okay? That's the concrete stage. Pinakita mo talaga. Okay? Let the children manipulate things. Hold things. Dapat na- nahawakan talaga nila. Yun kasi yun. Mas maintindihan nila yun. Kasi na-experience nila. Meaningful ang learning nila. Kasi engage. Na-engage sila. Kasali sila. Yan yung dapat para sa mga 21st century learners. Okay. So let's proceed to the next stage. Pas- pag alam na nila yun, proceed na tayo. Sa P. Which stands for pictorial. So dito, you will present pictures. Pwede na. Pwede mga f- digital flashcards. Pwede rin mga drawings. Or pwede rin mga tools to represent the same information from the concrete stage visually. So mga graphs or ano-ano pa. Na, which serve as model pa rin nila. Na naintindihan pa rin, nila, pa rin nila. Which is related sa concrete na binigay mo. So this is more para enrichment activities. Para mas maintindihan nila yung concept. Okay? So like for example... Kanina, pinakita ko yung mga real objects or realia. So, ngayon, pwede na yung pictures. Okay, yung mga print mo. Ito, nag-represent ng tatlong bola. Colorful balls. Dagdagan mo ng five yellow and blue balls. So, ilan lahat ang balls mo? Okay, ito. Or, for example, another example. Mas maraming example, mas mabuti. Okay, so I have here two girls in the class at saka may eight boys in the class how many pupils are there in all so makikita nila sa picture okay so they are going to count yung iba they count they count they started counted here they start to count here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so there are 10 so ah, pag may dalawa tapos may walo pag you put them together you will have 10 Yes, because you're showing them pictures or graphs. Ano pa? Ano pa iba may pakita natin mga digital flashcards? Pwede yun. Okay? So, pag nalala, nalaman na nila yun, plus pag nalaman mo na okay na, you as a teacher, alam yan. So, pag malaman mo na okay na, then proceed to the third stage. The third stage is A. And A stands for abstract. Okay? Abstract so, this is understanding data using mathematical symbols and describe the data in words or numbers. So, ito na. So, pwede na ay magsulat ng 3 plus 5 equals 8. 8 plus 2 equals 10. So, this is now the abstract stage. Kasi, na, kon, ang concept ay alam na nila. So, ito na. Pwede ka nang mag-ano sa blackboard. This is already um, the third stage na. Kasi, sa kadalasan kasi, nag-jump, uh, nag-jump agad tayo sa third stage. ba So, hindi yun pwede. Kailangan step by step. You have to start with the concrete first, then pictorial, then abstract. Okay? So, like for example, kasi yung bata, kailangan talaga natin sila. Kailangan talaga natin silang... Um, Kumbaga, dapat hindi sila half-baked. Dapat talagang luto sila. Kasi, yun yung kadalasan nangyari. 
yung teachers a grade 5 or teachers a grade 4, teachers a grade 3. They are they keep on complaining sa mga previous teachers. Bakit pa hindi mo alam ito? Hindi ba itinuturo ng teacher mo ito? Hmm? Hindi mo ba t- hindi mo ba naintindihan ito? Bakit hindi mo alam? It's because half baked, half baked lang yung bata, may backlog. So mangyari, instead of mag-proceed sa next level, babalik ka pa kasi hindi niya naintindihan masyado. Okay. So marunong siya on that time. Marunong siya mag-solve kahit napaka, napakaraming digits, alam niya. Pero in, ang question is, naintindihan niya ba? Okay? May comprehension ba? Okay? So we are, in this, in this approach, we are teaching the child to find lots of solutions. Pinakita natin sa bata na hindi lang isa Kasi in math, hindi lang kasi isa yung pwede nating solution eh. Okay, we are training our children to become good decision makers in the future. Okay. Tinutulungan natin silang mag-isip, to think deeply, develop their hearts or the higher order thinking skills. So, ibigay mo sa kanila yung mga questions na they can think deep. Kailangan nilang mag-isip ng malalim. Kasi yung bata, as early as kindergarten, dapat tinuruan na sila mag-isip ng malalim. Para, when they reach higher levels, sanay na sila. Okay? So, pag, ano na, pag malaki na sila, when they grow up already, then, they can decide on their own, they can be good decision makers. Hindi sila mag-give up agad. Kasi sa math, na-train na sila na mag-isip, mag-isip, mag-isip. So, maraming solution sa problem. Yun yung itinituro ng math. Hindi, hindi natin pwedeng ibutang sa mindset or ilagay sa mindset ng bata na math is difficult because it's not. Math is easy. Every day in our lives, ka, ano na yung math? Andyan yung math. Pag-ising pa lang natin math na. Bumibili tayo sa tindahan, it involves math. So, every day, math. Andyan yung math. Kasi yung bata, ma, ano natin, ma-compare natin yung batang pala uh, sanay na mag-isip or sa, sinasanay ng teacher na mag-isip ng malalim or na-develop yung higher order thinking skills niya. Kasi, yung bata, pag pinakita mo ng number, like for example, pinakita mo siya ng 10, okay? Yung bata na parang spoon feed, uh, product ng spoon feeding, 10 lang yung may isip niya. Or maybe uh, 10, the word T-E-N. Or X, Roman numeral. Yun lang may isip niya. Pero yung bata na sanay, sanay mag-isip ng malalim, marami ang papasok sa isip niya. When we g- you give them 10, tapos sabihin mo, uh, say something about 10. Ano may masasabi mo sa 10? So pwede niya sabihin, 10 is the square root of 100. Diba? Or 10 is... 9 plus 1. Or 10 is 8 plus 2. Or 10 is 6 plus 4. 10 is 10 plus 0. 10 is 7 plus 3. 10 is 5 plus 5. 10 is 100 minus 90. So, ang dami. Ang dami niyang pwede maisip sa 10. Kasi, sanay siyang mag-isip. Na- na-develop na yung hearts niya. Sa so, yun. Ito yung product ng... ng uh, teaching, kumbaga, pag ang bata ay luto na, naluto na talaga, or hindi siya half-baked, yung bata ay sanay mag-isip, yung bata ay sanay na mag, uh, binibigyan mo ng mga problems, na dapat niya, dapat siya mag-isip ng malalim, yun, yun ang bata. Mas mag-isip pa siya. And maka, makahanap siya ng maraming solution sa problem. So, ito yun. So, kailangan natin, as teachers, as parents, na, hindi tayo, Kasi mahilig tayo sa shortcut. So, we have to follow the steps. Yan lang. It, it can also be applicable in other subjects. In science, if for example, you're teaching the parts of a plant. Show them a real plant. Bakit pa mag, mag, magpakita ng picture if andyan naman yung totoong plant? Mas maganda yung realia talaga. Or, for example, in araling panlipunan, pwede. So, for example, andyan ka sa bukid. Like me, and assigned sa remote barangay ng ng ano ko ng tao namin so araling panlipunan mga iba't ibang anyong lupa 
Diba? Ang an- yung tubig, landforms, waterforms. And then, pinalabas ko, pinakita ko. Sa likod ng school namin, nandun. Kasi pag nakasalalay lang sila sa pictures, hindi talaga nila makikita yung iba. Iba kasi ang makikita nila sa picture at sa, 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 sa totoo. So, let them experience. Kasi, pag na-experience nila yun, meaningful ang learning nila. Yun. Okay? So, yan lang muna siguro. So, I hope na may ma- natutunan kayo sa vlog na ito. Although, it's my first time. So, please support me in my future vlogs. Na it's uh, still about teaching. Still about learning. So, ano yun lang. Um, please support me. Then, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. And, please, abangan nyo yung mga sunod na vlogs ko. Okay? So, maraming salamat talaga. Please stay safe and God bless everyone. Bye!